Hello, and this is Michael O'Grady, and welcome to another video looking at symbols. This time it's buttons. Our library is empty, so let's just go to properties. We've done before an insert for symbols, and last time it was a graphic, this time it's button. I'm going to make a play button for some audio, and a stop button later. So we're now into our editing mode of the button, and you can see that our normal frames are now replaced by up, over, down, and hit. This is what the button will look like when the button is um, nowhere near the mouse, or the mouse is nowhere near the button, <laughs> uh, over, when the mouse is over, when the mouse is down, and hit is an invisible boundary that makes the button active. Uh, we can do invisible buttons or make the button act larger then it uh, appears. So let's just change the name of this uh, layer to background. I'm going to have three layers. The second layer, uh, which is above, I'm going to have some text on this layer. And I'm going to have a third layer just for audio, just to space things out so you can see what's happening. On our background layer in the first frame, I'm going to make a rectangle. I'm going to go to a primitive rectangle and put some uh, radii in on two corners. So I've got to unlock these, otherwise they're all the same. And I'm going to put 15 pixel radius at uh, top left, bottom right, and change the stroke color to a dark gray, change it to three pixels, and change the fill to a slightly different, just off stage green. So drag out a rectangle. I can resize this later if I, I wish. <coughs> so, when the mouse is over the button, I want to change its appearance. So I'm going to insert a keyframe, not a frame, a keyframe. And this allows me to copy over the artwork in the previous keyframe and now subtly change it. So I'll just change the color to a lighter, more yellowy green change the stroke to a lighter grey. And so when we roll over now, our button background looks like uh, this. I want some text on my button. The text is going to say play. So I'll just select the text tool, drag out a rectangle, and uh, it produces text exactly like the last time it was produced. So this will need some changing. So I'll just select the text, change its color. You can change the font. I'm just going to centralize it. We'll see uh, this makes a bit of difference when we change the text on a duplicate button as we make the stop button. So I'll just put that in the center. And then in the over, on the mouse over, I want to change the text color. So I'll insert a keyframe again, select the text on stage, and then just go to change the color. Uh, I'll make it white. Okay, so now our mouse uh, rollover looks like this. In fact, white is just a little bit insipid. Let's just change it to something a little more red. Okay. So when the mouse is, clicks the button, uh, we're going to insert a keyframe to change the appearance yet again. And all I'm going to do is select it on stage and with the down and the right uh, arrows, just drop the button down three pixels and to the right three pixels. Obviously for the text, I have to do the same. So insert a keyframe, select the text on stage, knock it down three and to the right three. Okay. So this is how our button looks uh, when we're going through the system. So there's nothing on stage, uh, so we can drag uh, some versions of the play button, either here from the name, or alternatively, do another one. Uh, we can drag it up from the, the visual area here. And I'm just dragging them loosely off stage, and now I'm going to align them. So if I go to Window and Align, and I can drag this into my Properties area, the blue area tells me when I release it, it's okay. So I'm just going to drag all those to select them and go to light, uh, left align or, or center or right. It doesn't matter, they're all the same size. And I'm going to distribute about their centers as well. So a couple of clicks and they're all nicely arranged. So when I go to play the movie, control and enter, um, I 
I've now got uh, my rollovers. Okay, and when I click, they move like so. Okay, so that's fairly okay. Obviously, I'd only have one play button. And here it is in the library. So, what I'm going to do now is put some audio in there. And I want to roll over, so I need a keyframe. Um, and in the down state, I'm going to play uh, a track. So, I need another keyframe there as well. The problem is that in my library, I don't have any audio. So, I need to go to the file import uh, to bring some audio in. Now, just off stage, we've got file import to stage and file import to library. I'm going to file import to library and I'm just selecting two sounds I've already um, got off sound, uh, flashkits.com. So, I'll open those uh, automatically, just bring them both in and there they are. So, to arrange them, I'm just going to go down here to the folder button and make a new folder called audio and drag each of these sounds into the folder and now I can open and close the audio folder at will and they're all nicely arranged. So on the overstate I'm going to click properties and uh, open the sound panel if it's not open just click the down, uh, right arrow and I'm going to click, click blip sound and you can see a little blue line there that's telling me there's the sound in the frame. On the down, I want the rock loop audio, so we'll just select that. And now press Ctrl and Enter, and um, okay, so quite um, an aggressive loud sound. Um, we'll close that off. Uh, I'll get rid of these four play buttons now because I want to seriously look at creating a, a stop button. And one of the ways in which I can do that, of course, is to go back to insert a new symbol, let's call it stop, um, and then I come back to creating a, a new symbol again. Our text background is, our background is still the, the same, but it's using different colours uh, from the text. So a better way to do this, <clears throat> if we go back to the library, is to get rid of this and actually take a copy of the play. It's the right button with the wrong text. So I'm just going to right click and duplicate and call it stop. And then going to edit stop. Of course it's got play text but I'm going to go into the individual text layers and change the text. Okay so let's just you can double click That's it, double click and change play to stop. And this is where having it centralized uh, works for you because you don't need to worry about the width of the text. As you go to different size text, uh, they're all in the center. So change these on each frame. Uh, the sound now, we don't want to play the sound. What we want to do is to control the sound, but we still want to control the rock loop. But instead of uh, playing, we want to go to synchronize or sync and stop. So when we stop the sound, it stops that particular sound from playing. And you can see the little rectangle up here, um, which is a, a stop. So if we export the movie now again, um, we've got the stop button. So let's just go to our library and drag our stop button on there and this should now uh, allow it to work. So press play and stop, play and stop and that's the, uh, the end of the movie. Thank you for watching.